Hello everyone, uh, this video covers the second part of chapter 17, so we still, still are in chapter 17. However, before we continue, uh, I will do a quick review of covariances. Since uh, some of you express that you have forgotten some of these rules, so we'll review them again, it's not an issue. First, the actual definition, so if x and y are some random variables, so some random variables, then the covariance between the two random variables is defined as the expected value of x, y minus the expected value of x times the expected value of y. Notice that if x and y are independent, so note, if x and y are independent, that means the expected value of x and y, or x and y, is the expected value of x, the expected value of y, so therefore the covariance of x and y is equals to zero when they are independent. So that's something to, to remember. Also, know the, the variance of x, so you could say this is node 1, node 2. The variance of x is the same thing as the covariance of x with x. Because if you plug it again into formula number one, this will give you the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x squared, which is the definition of variance. Rule number two says the following. If you have a constant multiplying one of the variables, the constant just comes out. And this is probably one that you forgot already. So you have the covariance of x, and then you have two more random variables here. You can split this into two pieces. And we're going to use this to prove the questions that you were, were supposed to do in the homework. One last note. Uh, you have the, you want to find the, the variance of two random variables. So you want to find the variance, for example, of x plus y. This is actually equals to the, the variance of x plus the variance of y. And then you need the covariance of x and y. But remember, if uh, the two variables are independent, then this will be zero, and you will only have the variance of x plus the variance of of y. All right, so let's do a couple examples where we use these formulas. Uh, now incorporating a Brownian motion. Remember the here w t is the Wiener process or the standard Brownian motion. So Brownian motion. All right, so this question is asking you to compute this. Now, it may be easier. It, it doesn't really matter, but it may be easier to see if we write it like this. The covariance, W1 with 3, W3 plus W2. Then by property number three, and again, you shouldn't confuse the nodes with the properties, so maybe it will make more sense to just call this node A and this one node, node B and so forth. So let me actually do that. Let's call this one A, B, and C. So by property number three, this should be equals to the covariance of W1 3w3 plus the covariance of w1 w2 that's by using property number three 
then by using by using property number two then this will be equals to three covariance of w1 times i mean n w3 plus the covariance of w1 with w2 all right now let's focus only on the blue part for now and we're going to do exactly the same thing with the black part let's say that then uh, we use the formula number three again but we're going to do the same trick we did before which is to add zero so this is the same thing as w1 and then w3 you can add nothing to it by doing this this will be w3 i mean sorry w1 plus w3 minus w1 okay then we're gonna do the same trick on the second part this will be the covariance of w1 and then we're gonna add and subtract w1 again so add and subtract which you are adding nothing again so this will be w1 this plus w2 and then you subtract w1 okay all right so now by property number three again so number three again you can break this into uh, two covariances so this is one term this will be another term so this will be three the covariance of w1 w1 plus the covariance of w1 with w3 minus w1 okay. so this part is equals to all of this and here the three is multiplying both of this notice that you're gonna get exactly the same thing from this one except there is no three so from here this will be plus the covariance of w1 w1 and then plus the covariance of w1 with w2 minus w1 running out of space here so therefore this gives you all of this next and this is very very important i uh, remember that brownian motion has independent increments which means that this is independent of this one and remember by node node a by this one the covariance of two independent variables is equals to, to zero so therefore this part is going to be zero the same thing happens here w1 is independent remember the symbol for independent or w2 minus w1 by independent increments so therefore this part is also going to be equals to, to zero so therefore we end up with three the covariance of w1 w1 plus zero and then plus the co uh, just the covariance of w1 w1 plus another zero so therefore you end up with four the covariance of w1 w1 now remember that when you do the covariance of the same variable that's nothing more than a fancy name for the variance so therefore this is just four times the variance of w1 
But remember the the variance of W T is equals to T. We showed this this before. So you should know you should look to the nodes from the start we did before. So therefore this is just four times one, which is equals to four. And that's it. What about the, the second one? Here, notice how it doesn't say anything about S and T. So you have to do this in general. So first, uh, let me, let, let's assume that S is less than T. If S is less than T, that makes the problem a lot easier. If, if you don't know which one is bigger, then the solution is practically the same. The book doesn't tell you in the question which one it is so let me do it this way first and then you'll see the the other way is technically the same thing now remember by definition this is equals to the expected value of w s times w t minus the expected value of w s times the expected value of w t so that's the definition of covariance. But remember that the expected value of the winner process is equals to zero. So therefore these two are equals to zero. So technically you could say this is technically given. Okay. I mean it's not given, but it's by the definition. So therefore this is just equals to the expected value ws wt okay. now here we know that s is less than less than t so therefore we do the same trick that we've been doing all along to add nothing so we have ws and then wt we're gonna rewrite it as of uh, Again, W S plus W T minus W S. By now, you should notice that this is pretty much the most common trick to add nothing. If you distribute this, you end up with the expected value of W S square plus the expected value of W S times wt minus ws so this part gives you this and this and that gives you that part now notice that these two are independent if s is less than t by the independent increments this and these are independent of each other. So if that's the case, then we get the, the following. This is the expected value of the winner process square plus the expected value of WS times the expected value of WT minus WS. However, remember that this was equals to zero and this was also equals to zero so therefore this is just equals to the specter of ws square which is the same thing as the variance of ws i mean the variance of ws which we found to be s before now uh, if you have a question like this on the test it will look like this however the homework which is good practice to try something a little more challenging the homework doesn't specify which one is bigger if s or t so therefore you cannot assume that s is less than t so instead uh, the solution on the back of the book for this problem which is essentially the same but not assuming that s is less than t has the following uh, notation usually if you write t sharp s this is actually means the minimum of these two so this is the minimum of t and s 
and you have this this is the maximum of the two so now you should check the solution on the back of the book and see that it's essentially the the same the same thing so for example here if s is less than t obviously if this was the case then the minimum of s and t clearly will be s and so forth so you should give it a try now it's exactly the, the same thing the last question on the homework i believe uh, is asking this so example it's asking you to find the covariance between wt and wt square now again by definition this is the expected value of wt times wt square minus the expected value of wt times the expected value of wt square so therefore this is the expected value of WTQ and this one will be zero. This one is actually T by definition. So this is the expected value of WTQ. Now this is actually the the third moment. So if you have seen before a uh, moment generating uh, functions then you should check that you haven't seen that before I mean you saw that in the past so technically this is asking you to find the term moment of a um, normal distribution so you should check that the term moment is equals to, to zero and that's it uh, in this question which I believe was one of the questions you have for the quiz so I will do most of the question since it's a quiz you need to finish the last just the last part uh, and the question says the following let bt be defined as the, the following this is the winner winner process t is a uh, the terminal time t is a uh, is capital uh, lowercase t goes from zero to the terminal uh, par this is the Brownian motion or the winner process evaluated at the terminal time. I need to show that this is equal to this. Notice that we already know and we showed this before that WT is a martingale. However, that's not what the question is asking. The question is just asking to show that this is equal to that. And you may need to use the fact that it, this is a martingale but it's not showing that this is a, a martingale I'm not asking you to show that it's a martingale all right so let's see what what we have here so first um a u square b of t so b of t square the same thing as w t minus t over capital t w capital t the whole thing square so if you foil, this is wt square minus 2 lowercase t, capital T, wt, w capital T, plus t square over t square, wt square. Okay, so that's just basic algebra. Remember, a minus b square is equals to a square minus 2ab plus b square. Okay, so this gives you this. Now, we're going to use the same trick we've been using all along, which is to add nothing. You just have to be careful where to add nothing. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to factor here minus 2t capital T. And then this part, I'm gonna rewrite it like this. 
is going to be w t times uh, capital T minus W lowercase t. And same, same trick we did before. Remember, this is 0. You are in nothing. Okay. The last one, just leave it alone. This is t squared. t squared W t squared. If we break the middle part, we end up with this. This is W squared. It will be minus 2t over capital T. So notice that you distribute. You end up with WT squared. Then plus, uh, or actually minus, so this should be minus, you distribute. 2t over capital T, lowercase t, times of capital T, lowercase t, and then plus t squared over t squared, wt squared, which you already, already have. Again, this gives you this. All right, so then if we take the expected value in both sides, then from here we get the, the expected value of pt squared is the same thing as the expected value of wt squared minus 2t over t, the expected value of wt squared minus uh, 2t over capital T expected value of wt w capital T minus w lowercase t and then finally plus t square over t square the expected value of capital T square again uh, from before, remember that this, the first one is equals to t. The second one is going to be 2t over capital T times t. Remember that this part gives you t. From here, you should be able to, to finish this. It's a straightforward you just have to simplify this part and this part and combine it so after that it should take like three more minutes and that's it all right so now let's go to uh to the second part of uh chapter 17 so as you can see uh everything we've done so far is related to uh brownian motion uh, and specifically the winner winner process, which is the standard Brownian motion. And uh, we show that the Brownian motion has um, independent increments, which is what makes this easier to do or to deal with. And we also show that Brownian motion is actually a martingale too. So let's go to the to the next page. Now. Uh, we did this before, so this is another review. Uh, you have this even on the last test. It's the same same formula. So we're going to need this many times now. So just remember the formula. Here, uh, D is a normal distribution with mean mu and uh, variance sigma squared. And the expected value of this where d has the distribution is equal to this and here a is a is a constant okay so you have seen this formula multiple multiple times now uh, let's see how we're gonna be using this formula over and over so you should also be familiar with this let's say st 
is equal to S0 e to the xt, okay? where let's say that xt is a normal distribution that has a mean mu t and variance sigma square t. So the question is, what will be the expected value of st? All right, so by definition, this will be the expected value of s0 e to the xt. Since s0 is a constant, you can take it out, and then this will be the expected value of e to the xt. But e to the xt has a normal distribution with these parameters. So therefore, this will be S0 e to the mu t plus sigma square over 2 t. Notice that for this one, the value of a, you can think is equals to, to 1. Now, what about this? What will be the expected value of S t square? So, by definition, this will be the expected value of S0 square e to the 2xt. Now, how do we get that? Well, remember that if you have e to the x and you square that, this is the same thing as e to the 2x, nah, x square. So that's how we get this. So again, you can take the constant out and we get the following. This will be the expected value of e to the 2xt. Now, notice here that a corresponds to the value of 2 here and d is xt. So now we use the, the formula. So this will give us S0 square um, times the formula says this should be uh, e to the 2 mu t plus sigma square over 2 t times 2 square which is which is 4 and this simplifies to S0 square e to the 2 mu t plus 2 sigma square t if you simplify this. Why? Because this will give you 4 divided by 2 will give you 2 and you can see this very easily. As you can see this is pretty easy and all you have to do is rely on this this formula. What about the variance of st? That's going to be one of the homework, homework questions. You just have to use these formulas that we just come up with again. All right, let's do another, another example that requires these formulas. So here uh, we have the following uh, stochastic process defined by this. Yt is just equals to e to the xt, where xt... Uh, here, xt is normal. It is a xt is a. Let me raise this part. Xt is a mu sigma Brownian motion. Okay. So it's not a standard Brownian motion. Remember that the Stranian, the standard running motion WT is called a zero one Brownian motion. Okay, just for reference. Again, the question here is not asking to show that it's a, it's a martingale, it's just telling you or it's asking to show that this given this for S less than T should give you all of this right here. 
and surprise, surprise, we're gonna use the, the same trick we have been using all along. So here it is. First, notice that you can rewrite uh, y t is the same thing as e to the xs plus xt minus xs, which is equals to e to the xs times e to the xt minus xs. Again, that's from basic algebra. Remember, you have e to the a plus b is the same thing as e to the a times e to the b. Okay. All right, therefore, the expected value or y t given y s is going to be the same thing as the expected value of e x s times e to the x t minus x s given e to the x s. The first thing you should notice is that this part is measurable with respect to this, so therefore you can take it out. So this will be e to the x s times expected value of e to the x t minus x s given e to the x s. You can actually only use x s here you want because see you know xs that means you know e to the xs so either way is fine all right so notice also that since this is a baryonic motion it has independent increments so therefore this is independent of this one and if it is independent then this is equals to the following it will be x to the s and then this is the expected value of e to the x t minus x s also recall the x t minus x s has a normal distribution where the mean is uh, mu t minus s and the variance is uh, sigma square t minus s. Therefore, by the formula right here, this one, using the value for of a equals to zero, this will give us, uh, this is e to the x, x s, now let me write this better. X S. Well, this one, if we use the formula, this will be e to the 1. Remember the value for A in here is 1. So here the value for A is 1. And then this will be mu T minus S plus sigma square t minus s over 2 times 1 square. Again, here for this step, we're using the formula on the top, which says the expected value of e to the a m or a d where this are normal distribution is equals to e to the mu a plus sigma square a square over two and our case a is equals to one okay. now from here notice that we can factor the t minus t minus s so this will give us e to the x s e to the t minus s then it will be mu 
plus sigma squared over 2 and you factor the t minus s which gives you this bar then this and this gives you this but remember by definition e to the x is the same thing as y capital y s so then this is all you need and you get the, the result all right now before we talk about geometric burning motion let's go back to the very beginning like around chapter four or five remember that this is the model we have so far as n was equals to in the discrete case one plus s uh, a one plus kc n and this was um equals to s n minus one so that's the the model that we have used so far or that we use a lot in the discrete case remember here n was equals to one two all the way to n now uh, we have two probabilities in the discrete case remember the probability that can see n was equals to a was equals to one half and the probability that can see n was equals to b it was also equals to one half and this is what we call the market probability which remember it was not very useful or very accurate to find the uh, auction price but then we also have the other choice where a was equals to e to the mu delta t minus sigma the square of t minus one and b was equals to e to the mu delta t plus sigma radical t minus one where this remember was the risk neutral or the ones that give you the martingale um probabilities where now remember the for this case the probability that kc n was equals to b this was equals to q which was equals to e to the r delta t minus one plus a over b minus a and the probability that kc n equals to a was equals to one minus q okay. also remember the for uh, or if you let t to be equals to l delta t which is less than equals to t that we have the following uh, result ln of s l over is zero was equals to mu t plus uh, sigma the square root of delta t and here we have a sum from k equals to one to l of epsilon of b k then as delta t goes to zero Remember by the central limit theorem and all the results we did before, ln of SL over S0 approaches to ln of ST over S0 to the continuous case, where this was equals to mu T plus sigma, and then here we end that with the winner process. So we have done this before. So therefore, from here we got a continuous time model, which will mean s of t will be equals to s zero e to the mu t plus sigma w t, and this is what is called a geometric 
Brownian motion. Okay. So these give us a continuous price model. So this is continuous price model. So this gives you the stack price of any time t. Now the last thing that remains is the following. Notice how uh, when we did this a while ago, this will give you a, a price, but this was not the risk neutral price. So you can think of this model as this market model or the market probability. So now we have to come up with one based on this one where we get a risk neutral pricing. Remember that this at that time uh, imply the this will give you a Martingale and Anderson specific conditions. So we're going to do something very, very similar now in the continuous case. Remember that from a while ago, this was the auction price and the option price was defined to be the discounted expected payoff where Q was the Martingale measure or the Martingale probability. Remember that we have this, the Q, the probability that KC will be equals to V was equals to Q, where Q was defined as this and then the probability that can see will be equals to a was equals to one minus q okay and using this uh risk remember these were called the risk neutral probabilities or measure that using this the expected value of C was equals to a times one minus q plus v times q which once you simplify we got the, the following we have done this at least two or three times before and from here the expected value remember of s1 which was the stock price at one period. This was equals to the expected value with respect to Q of S0 times 1 plus KC, which uh, was equals to S0, the expected value of 1 plus KC, and once you simplify, you end up with e to the r delta t times s0. Remember, we have delta t because it was one period only, since we have only s1. So you go from s0 to s1. So this is what we did in the discrete case. So therefore, from here, s0 was equals to the expected value of e to the minus r delta t s1, which is the, expect, the discounted expected payoff, which is essentially this part right here. Now, recall from the, what we did at the beginning today, or in the middle of the, this video, the, the expected value of st was equals to s0, the expected value of e to the xt, and this was equals to s0 e to the mu t plus 
sigma squared t over 2. Okay, so you should stop the video and check that with the, this at the beginning. Which if you factor the t, this is the same thing as s0 e to the mu plus sigma squared over 2 t. Okay, now going back to this, remember that in essence this is a martingale. So therefore we're gonna we're gonna do something very similar and also get a martingale with this. Therefore uh, if so note if we want a martingale so you want a martingale we need uh, to have something like this, the expected value of s of t has to be equals to e to the r, let's say r tilde, new r, t times s of 0. So this one is going to require that you choose some new uh, mu star and sigma star for lack of a better name for now therefore if you look to this result okay, and if we want this to equals to this from here this implies the r tilde has to be equals to mu plus sigma squared over over 2 or mu star you solve for mu so solve for mu we solve for mu you end up with mu star will be equals to r tilde minus sigma squared over 2 therefore remember that this is what we have before so we have the st was equals to s0 e to the mu t plus sigma wt. So therefore, if we substitute the new value for mu, this will give you the following. We're going to have s0 e to the r minus sigma squared over 2t plus sigma w t. All right, therefore, this will be the, this will be the risk neutral price. So then this will be the risk neutral price of s of t. In this geometric uh, Brownian motion, so this is the basic reference uh, model for stack price in continuous time. For stack prices or stack price in continuous time. Notice how the the price doesn't depend on mu or the drift, only on the interest rate and the volatility. Uh, we talked about that before, I believe, in chapter 16. So for the risk-neutral price, it doesn't depend on the drift at all.